Hey guys, welcome to the Three Circle Church Podcast. Again, if you're tuning in, uh, what we're doing right now on the podcast is we're basically going a little deeper uh, into what we talked about on the weekend. The weekend teaching at Three Circle is always going to be straight from the Word of God. And right now, we happen to be going through the life of Gideon in the book of Judges. Gideon was uh, not a judge like we think of today with a gavel and a and a robe uh, in a legal sense. The judges in the Old Testament during this time were simply people God raised up to be really military leaders in a way. They were to advance the children of Israel into the promised land. And the problem was Israel was not advancing the way they were supposed to, which was absolutely disobedient to God. And that's where we get these judges. And and probably the three most famous judges are Samson, Deborah, and the one we're talking about right now, Gideon. And we're in week two. And uh, I have on the podcast with me today our Daphne campus pastor and also on our teaching team, one of our teachers and preachers around here. Pastor Jonathan Duke. Jonathan, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Pastor Chris. It's an awesome opportunity to be here. Yeah, man. Well, it's good to have you with us. Of course, you are, uh, you've been a lead pastor. You've been preaching and teaching God's Word for a long, long time. I think your theological background uh, you did uh, for your grad work, Liberty, is that right? That's right. Theological t- school. And uh, so you love the Word of God, and, and, and we're loving walking through this, uh, this Gideon series, right? I mean, uh, what, what are just some of your initial thoughts as we've been walking through it? Um, that that kind of surprise you maybe they kind of jump off the page about Gideon because I think most of us right we grow up knowing about that one big battle you know if you grew up in church you, right. you Gideon and that battle but boy there's a lot more to him right yeah oh absolutely and I I kind of leaned into that Sunday and and discussed how you can look at certain biblical characters especially somebody like a Samson and you go I don't see a relatable feature in him, right? I'm not that strong or... See, Jonathan, I always have related to Samson, strangely enough. <laughs> well, you probably would, <laughs> no, but no, you no. know, <laughs> uh, I don't go to the gym nearly that much. Yeah, right, so right. But for, you're a runner, so you, but you've you got the cardio thing going on. Right, right. And so, you know, you look at, uh, you know, one of the characters I, I referenced, you know, specifically was Elijah, you know, and going through his series and you just see these epic things and, and the, the kind of reference I made and the joke I made was... I'm very thankful that James in the New Testament says that Elijah is a guy like us because if yeah. he had not made that statement, we may not view him, you so know, true. that way. Um, but Gideon is one of those you you look into his life and you see what is modeled throughout Scripture uh, in in the example he gives for us, and he is a very relatable character. He deals with self doubt, he deals with fear, he deals with anxiety. You know, yeah. he deals with all these issues that that are so relatable for so many people. Yeah, absolutely, and I'm I'm really grateful for that too because I think we can look at Gideon and go, man, if God can use him. Him. He can use right. us, right? Right, absolutely. So this week, you and I both taught from basically the same scriptures, and our approach here is that we really believe in what we would call kind of incarnational teaching. So uh, it's it's kind of overstated to call it a teaching team because, in a sense, we're all we're all praying and doing the work of getting to know these passages and teaching them, and then we may collaborate at the very end and go, "Oh, wow, you saw something I didn't see there." And right. and so, but one thing we both kind of saw in this passage, Jonathan is the fact that this is kind of the battle before the battle a little bit. And and what we're talking about is God, after calling Gideon to be the leader for Israel during this time, Gideon is finally convinced to obey and do what God's telling him to do. And I think everyone would think, okay, time to go fight the Midianites, these right. bullies on the block. But that's not the first battle. That's going to be the big public battle that we're all going to read about forever. But there was a there was a smaller battle that I argued Sunday may be the more important one. And it was that day, the Bible says, God said to Gideon, go home and tear down the altar to Baal that your dad has built, basically, in your backyard, you know? And so, which is amazing, now we find out Gideon was raised by a Baal worshiper, a false god worshiper, and before Gideon can go fight the evil empire Midianites, he's got to deal with the junk in his own home. And man, I think there's a lot there. So, Jonathan, if you and I could talk about that for a few minutes, what are some little battles, the small battles, that you think we as men and women have to fight 
before we can really fight the public ones, the ones maybe no one ever sees? What's some that you would think would float to the surface? Right. Well, I think in, in you know this example that we see in Gideon, you know, one of the things when he has that first encounter with the Lord and the Lord's speaking with him and having that conversation with him, you know, that's an act of obedience between him and the Lord that you see in that passage of Scripture. And then as we transition into the tearing down the altar, it's really that first step of public obedience. This is God saying, I want you to go public with your obedience to me. I want other people to now witness this. Mm. And you see Gideon really wrestling with that. He wants to do it at night. He wants to do it under the cover of darkness. He doesn't want to do it on public display, and rightfully so. He's scared. You know, he's he's literally fearful for right. uh, losing his life. And so you see him step through in ob- obedience and say, uh, you know, I'm going to do what God's called me to do, and I am going to do this public act. And I think for us as believers, when you think about that progression in our own personal lives. You know, you see really a calling from the Lord from a personal aspect, and you have to respond to that between you and God. It's a personal matter. But then God immediately commands us as Christ followers to go public. You know, Mm -hmm. he says, you know, follow through with believer's baptism. Follow through with... Okay, so you would say baptism. Yeah, right. That's a very interesting connection. Right. Uh, So you would say in a modern sense in the New Testament church, you kind of see baptism as a little bit about what's going on here. It's like the intro level to, will you be obedient to me in this first step? And Mm. then, of course, we have that constant, you know, as we're uh, sanctified and as we learn God's Word and as we grow in our understanding of Him, you know, of course, God zeroes in on things in our life that we really need to surrender to Him, idols that we need to tear down, things that need to get dealt with. But I love that God, many times throughout Scripture, you see that personal encounter with a prophet or with someone in the Old Old Testament or New Testament. And then you see that commissioning. You see, I need you to handle this yeah. responsibility. And oftentimes, it's not huge battles right out of the gate. You know, it right. is those small acts of obedience that God lays out wow. for us. That is a really good insight, man. So so we could say, if we're going to kind of identify maybe some ways we can relate to this passage with our own small battles, you'd say, hey, baptism's a big one. Right. Before we can move on, you know, I've had people over the years, maybe you have Jonathan in your ministry background that followed Jesus for a long, long time, but but somehow it got missed, the baptism piece. And I have, you know, so it's not that they're not, we don't believe baptism makes you a Christian. Right. It doesn't even make you more of a Christian. Right. Like you're saved by grace, you know, through faith by grace. And, uh, but baptism is a form of obedience. And so I've seen it turbocharge, if you will, the growth in a Christian's life, even if they've been Christians for years, but they go back and 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 they obey God in baptism. It seems like this thing is lifted off of their growth, this lid. And it's almost like, oh, we forgot to fight that one, that battle. Right, right. Have you seen that? Oh, absolutely. And I think I think it's relatable. And and baptism is such a, a neat kind of thing to kind of compare to what Gideon is is struggling with in his own personal walk. But God says, I want you to deal with this and I want you to be obedient to me. Mm. And you've got to take into consideration what's the public gonna think? What are your peers gonna think? What's, what's your family dad, gonna think? Right. right. What's your fam- what's your immediate family gonna think? And so Gideon's wrestle in all those thoughts, and it's the same thing that we as believers wrestle with when we submit our lives to Christ. Hey, yeah. what are my friends going to think about me? What are my coworkers going to think about me? My family members and uh, and and everyone. You know, I need to take that into consideration. And God says, "This is your first step of public obedience to me, where the world becomes aware that you and I have a relationship." Mm. And I think it's so powerful to see Gideon struggling with different aspects of that, but yeah. also, you know, different people struggle with that in different ways. Even oh, today. yeah. That's huge, man. So we have baptism sitting there that we think we can relate to it. Here's another one I think. Tell me what you what you see, but I know this. If I, if I read the Word on a regular basis, so if I get into the Word and have some time with the Lord in prayer, good for me to do that in the morning. It seems like for me, that's the small battle for me to fight, that discipline battle, that consistency battle that enables me to fight the bigger battles that inevitably come, right? Right, right. I feel like I am set and ready then. I feel like my armor is on, my spear is sharp, my sword is in the sheath. I'm ready to go when I've had that time with God, but but that's a battle. That consistency is a battle. Do you do you see that as well? Oh, 100%. And that's one of the things I, you know, when I'm pouring into, especially young men, uh, guys that are surrendering their life to the Lord and are trying to be obedient, you know, as young men and young fathers and uh, young husbands, um, you know, having conversation with them, I say, you know, one of the first things that we really have to show maturity in is in our discipline, you know, in, in many things in life, but definitely in regards to getting into God's Word, you have to be disciplined in that. You know, mm-hmm. there's days when you wake up and it's not the most convenient thing, or you don't right. feel, uh, you know, up to it for whatever reason, or maybe you have 10,000 distractions coming at you, yes. but you have to be disciplined. It has to become part of who you are 
in, in your in your normal routine of life, this act of God, I'm going to start. I'm going to I'm going to really focus in on devoting time to you each and every day. Yeah, absolutely. Why do you think, Jonathan? Because I know for me, um, and man, I've been a Christian since I was 12 years old, and I have to admit that it's still a battle. Sometimes, even when I do get there, like when I get to the place in my living room where I've got my cup of coffee and I've got my Bible and I'm ready to have my time with God, even now, after all these years of walking with Jesus, knowing how good it's going to be if I'll just spend that consistent time, you said the word, man, the distractions come. Mm -hmm. Like even in my own mind, the ability to stay focused. And I don't know if you see this. I see a spiritual edge to it. I think our enemy, I think Satan wants to keep us distracted, to keep us from focusing on the Word. And 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 so I bet a lot of folks listening right now are, are nodding their heads. They're in right. their cars, they're on their porch going, yeah, me too, yeah, me too. And so how what would you say to them? Do, do you see that, that possibly, and, and why would he, by the way, why would Satan want us to, to not be able to focus and, and win this small battle every day, spending time with God in his Word before we went on with our day? Well, I mean, Satan definitely doesn't want us to be equipped with Scripture, because Scripture is one of the most powerful weapons that we have, Mm -hmm. both to handle ourselves personally, but also to handle this world that we find ourselves living in, right? And so it is the highest level of equipping for the Christ follower. And so Satan's wanting to take that tool out of the toolbox, if you will. Absolutely. And so he comes at us. And and to be honest with you, I think sometimes Satan doesn't even have to get involved. We we are self-sabotaging. We're giving him too much credit. <laughs> right, right. We give him way too much credit. And that's mm. that's my biggest thing that that uh, I don't want to give Satan credit that that my selfish, flesh and, sinful yeah. flesh needs credit for, right? And um, For me, it's my iPhone. I mean, i got to be honest. Yeah. Like, if I... I, I have learned to put that thing in another room because right. typically that I don't know what you're you've got kids too just like I do you're probably getting up rolling you and your wife are getting them ready for school breakfast all that stuff I do that as well so I try to get up about thirty to forty minutes before I'm going to get them rolling same. Yeah. okay yeah. same thing okay so but also there's that temptation to go I wonder who won the game last night I love mm-hmm. sports and 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 then you. I don't know what it is about it. It's like eating one chip out of a bag before you know it, half the bag's in your belly. To, to me, the iPhone, I, before I know it, 20 minutes are gone, and I don't know where those 20 minutes went. Right. Do you find that as a distraction? 100%. Absolutely. What do you do to counteract that? I mean, I'm I'm kind of of the same school. Uh, you know, leave a phone in a different area, or mm-hmm. kind of just be disciplined and hey, don't touch that thing mm-hmm. until you spend time with the Lord. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, make sure that that you try to remove that distraction if at all possible. Um, and you know, you're probably like like me, you've had that looks different ways. You know, throughout your adulthood, right? Yeah. Your interaction with technology devices and your interaction right. with your quiet time, uh, location changing, you know, maybe where yeah. you do it or, you know, yeah. what time of day you do it. So for me, my kids get up so early that I had to really bump up and get up super early in the morning okay. to have some just dedicated quiet time mm-hmm. with the Lord. Um, and so, you know, for other people, they're like, well, I'm not morning. I'm not a morning person, but you have to, you have to find that place in time. Yeah, it doesn't have to be the morning, right? Right. It doesn't what have works to be. for you. Right. You got to remove the distractions though. You've got to eliminate you gotta be able to focus, as right? many distractions as possible. Yeah. You know, Carrie Newhoff, great podcaster, uh, you know, we, we would be the Honda Civics in the Cadillac world, <laughs> Carrie <laughs> right. Newhoff's right. podcast, right. but we had him in a few years ago and, uh, he, he talked to us about the fact that focus is a superpower. Right. Because we live in a world of distraction, right. more distracted than ever. And I do – what do you think about this? I see focus, like really mentally, spiritually focusing on God's Word in my time with Him as a form of worship. You know, it's a form of glorifying God to go, you've got me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fight to focus on what you're saying to me, not just blow through it, not check it off my to-do list, oh, have my quiet time, but really let him speak to me. You know what I mean? Right, absolutely. And I think people get mixed up. They think it has to be done a certain way. Mm. You know, like I heard my my grandfather did his quiet time this way, or Pastor Chris, you know, or, or whoever, uh, talks about doing their quiet time in a certain way. And so that must be the way mm, that I have good. to do quiet time. And what I've seen just in my own personal walk with Christ is that is – an evolving process, okay. you know, and it, it has changed throughout the years. I bet right? that's encouraging some people right now. And I, uh, you know, I've heard prayer journaling. You know, that was a big thing growing up uh, when I was coming up through church. And I'm and not great at that. Are you? I, I am seasonally, so okay, I'll seasonally. do it, and I'll be 
uber dedicated to it and and you know do it every single day mm. i do it on an ipad because it's easier for me to keep track okay. of than a than a notebook or something like that uh, but then there'll be seasons where it's like man i am not prayer journaling right now but i'm still spending time with the lord it just looks a little different you wow. know and um and i've learned i used to feel guilty about that but i've learned to just really embrace it um Larry Osborne is one that really influenced me uh yeah. in regards to that because you know he was like hey it, it's not going to be this rigid routine where you right. uh you're not obedient to God unless you do quiet time every day this way. Um That's so good. Really That's learn to free. embrace, you know, that seasonal aspect of what God is working in your life. Would you say Jonathan that consistency is the bigger priority oh, absolutely. than kind right. of how? Right. Right. Yeah, yeah 100%. I mean and it's just like anything, like when you first start taking on that discipline in your life, it doesn't come natural. You know, uh, I, I went to the CrossFit gym with my brother-in-law, you know, last week and he invited me. It was bring yeah. a friend week. And I was the most awkward human ever <laughs> in this CrossFit gym. I, I did CrossFit for, honestly, I mean, I'm, uh, it's the only time I've ever hurt my back and I've lifted <laughs> and done sports and all that. The only time I ever hurt my back was when I did CrossFit yeah. and I'm sure it's awesome yeah. and I did it wrong, but, uh, I'm not man, even sure it's exercise. I think it's just torture, but I, you I, know, yeah, anyway. yeah. yeah. Uh, well, well, they wear you out first. Right. Let's run for a little while and now let's do Olympic lifts. <laughs> <Right>. Exactly. <laughs> what exactly. could go wrong? <laughs> and, uh, and so I think, you know, that was just a reminder. But it was a new thing for you, it right? It was, it was a new thing. It was an awkward thing. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm learning all these, uh, proper ways to lift and proper ways to do things or the CrossFit ways you yes. know, to do things. Um, and, and in our walk with God, I think we have to be, you know, uh, have that same type of mm. mindset. You know, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be committed first and foremost. I'm going to clear out time every day to do this. I'm going to be good. disciplined in it. But I'm also going to be willing to grow and, and glean things from other people, yeah. learn from other people, and get ideas, you know, on, on how they do quiet time, you know, how they spend time with the Lord. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and what can I implement into my life, mm-hmm. you know, from that. Okay. So we're, we're – and what we're doing here is basically we're looking at this ancient passage – about an ancient guy, but we're saying, okay, what can we get out of this? You know, and there's so much we could go a million different directions. But the one thing we're doing is we're saying, hey, before he fought his big battle against the Midianites, he had to go fight the battle in his own backyard, in his own home, in his own community. It, it was a small battle that led to the bigger battle, and so we've kind of said, hey, for the for the new Christian, it's often baptism. Let's get that mm-hmm. done, and it leads to other great things. And then, uh, and then, our on a daily basis as Christians, we're saying your time with God and in the Word sometimes will be a fight to focus to make it happen. But it's a worthy battle that sets the others up. So let's talk this one. You and I are both, and I bet we got a lot of people tuning in that are married. Let's talk marriage for a minute. Mm-hmm. What are some small marriage battles that lead to? Uh, a great marriage that you have experienced. Yeah, I think um, for me, you know, home life influenced a lot of you know my young adult years, and uh, I had the benefit of of going to Troy University and, right. and taking some communication classes. And funny enough, one of them was gender communication, and mm. and there was a lot of others, but I had to do a lot of introspect, you know, a little, little self discovery, you know, throughout that whole process. Wow. Look in the mirror, and uh, and one of the one of the you know, and it's kind of commonplace. You hear this said all the time in church, but learning to say I'm sorry, Ooh. right? Learning to to have that humility to yeah. to say I'm going to say sorry and work towards resolution first. That's mm. and so I love like you know if, if you have two spouses you know in a marriage that are both dedicated to pursuing forgiveness and and reconciliation mm-hmm. and who can get there first. Like that is a powerful marriage where both people are trying to beat each other to. But boy, hey, but that's a battle, right? It it's is. A, it's, it's an a internal huge battle, right? Because you want to be right oh, yeah. and you want to win the argument. Because we're human. Yeah, I want to argue. I want to be right. Mm-hmm. I want to win. I want my feelings, you know, to mm-hmm. get involved, and I want my feelings to be justified, and all those kind of things. And the problem when you're married is if you win, it means your spouse has to lose. Absolutely, and no one wants to, <laughs> to be a loser, right. you know. Right, right. Yeah. And the only way both of you win is if you work towards reconciliation. That's so good. But you know, for me, that is a battle. It is. And I think we don't want to admit that, but like all great marriages, just like a great relationship with God, takes work. Right. It takes work. It doesn't just fall into your lap. Right. So you're saying a big battle that you and your wife have learned is to be humble enough to quickly go, I own this. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to win here. Right. I want resolution. What do you think the difference is in winning the argument, winning the situation, and actually seeking resolution? What would be the the distinctive between those? Well, I think um, 
I think it's it's where your heart is first mm-hmm. and foremost. You know, uh, again, kind of looking at yourself and saying, what is my what what is the angle I'm trying to work in this? Like, mm-hmm. am I trying to get something that benefits me, or do I have a servant-hearted mentality yeah. here? Am I trying to serve my spouse? Am I trying to best serve my family? So you um, start with your own motive. You're looking into your. I'm own I'm looking heart. at man because I, I know I'm messed up. You know, I oh, always love to start man. with me. So the so you're saying that you can't start by picking your spouse apart. Is yeah, that what you're saying? I mean, you right can. Now? It's just not going to work out for anybody. So. <laughs> Right, it never does. I don't recommend it, but uh, but no, I mean, so often, my favorite thing is when I have to tell my wife, I'm aggravated right now, and I have no idea why. Oh, man. It's just a me thing. You know, I'm just cranky that day. So you'll verbalize that. Oh, I will. <laughs> and I'll say it, uh, you know, and, and I'm fortunate that I'm not typically, you know, my default setting isn't a cranky guy most of the time, but I'll get there some yeah. days. I'm, I'm exhausted, or I can't necessarily put a finger on what's wrong right. with me. But it's not her fault. You know, she didn't. So you she, found it good to go ahead and get that out and go, right. hey, I don't know why. I don't know what's wrong with me today. Yeah, I'm off. I'm off. And, mm. uh, you know, I'm, I'm grouchy and I'm cranky. I need a minute. And, you know, I need to decompress is normally what that means. I need to go yeah. get some time, you know, quiet time or. Do some CrossFit. Know, do some, no, definitely not CrossFit. Maybe go for a run <laughs> for me. make you more. You know, whatever, whatever's your thing, you know. <laughs> more upset. Yeah. Right, right. I love that. So let's give one more battle. So we're, we're going to end on this one. So, uh, and, and again, if you're listening in, we're just looking at Gideon and we're looking at his life. We don't all have a Midianite army bearing down upon us the way they did, but there is a lot we can learn from the Israelites and Gideon situation. Before Gideon fought his big battle, he had to tear down the altar in the backyard first. And we're saying we've got those same kinds of battles, our quiet time with God every day. Baptism, if you've never followed the Lord in, in baptism, doesn't make you a Christian, but it sure is that step of obedience that's so very crucial. Um, and then we talked about marriage and and being willing to uh, own things, take responsibility, keep those those communication lines open. These are small battles, but let's talk about parenting. So you and I are both daddies, and uh, I, you and I have discussed before our love for our children, our love of being dads. Right. But but that's a battleground, right? What are some little battles that you've seen that if you will go ahead and take care of business and do what needs to be done as a dad, it really opens the door to greater victories in the future? Well, again, I'm that guy that I, I tend to start with me. And and one of the biggest concerns I have in, in this world that we now live in is, uh, man, what battles are my kids going to have to face? You know, mm-hmm. my kids are so young. And I can, How old are your kids? I have a six-year-old and a four-year-old. Okay. And so it's very easy for me to try to predict. They're going to struggle with this. They're yeah. going to run into this. They're going to have to, to to deal with this opposition. And, and some of that may be true. Mm-hmm. But I find myself worrying. You know, oh, I don't want them to develop into this person or yeah. these tendencies or these habits. You know, right. and they're so young, and it's crazy to even think about, you know, getting stressed out about that. But it's so true. And when, when does that day happen that your kids start sliding down that that, yeah. that slope? And so for me— I really had to, you know, seek the Lord and, and say, God, am I supposed to be praying about everything that I stress about that might be a potential thing that my kid's going to deal with? And it was like God spoke into my heart and, and was like, why don't you speak over them truth that you hope they experience in their walk with Christ? Wow. And so it kind of goes along the lines of what we would, you know, most people consider to be affirmations. So yeah. instead of praying about or talking to my kids about all these things that might be potential mm-hmm. problems— it's like, why not equip them with affirmations now of who they are in Christ wow. and what God desires for them to be, the type of men God desires for them to be, mm-hmm. and let them hear that repeatedly. Not, that's good. don't do this or don't yeah, do yeah. that or don't watch this or don't watch, you know, like all those little things that you can get hung up on. It's, right. man, I want you to be equipped for whatever comes your way. And uh, and I don't have it down to science yet. Oh, you know? no, I got no, a six-year-old and a four-year-old, so I'm no expert Yeah, sure. yeah, but that's really helpful because I think – so my kids are 17 and 14 and 13 now. So I'm just – you know, I'm one step ahead of you down that right. road. And, uh, man, I look at my – my own fathering and I see a million things I could have, should have done better and, and, you know, but I do think that one thing about parenting is that we can real quickly fight the wrong battles. Right. You know? Right. And I love what you're saying there. Uh, instead of stressing over every little thing and thinking, oh my goodness, you know, my, my kid just did this at six years old. That probably means he's going to be a terrible 20 year old. It's like, come on now. Right. There's little things that aren't, uh, so it sounds to me like instead of focusing on the little minutia of parenting, you've decided, hey, I'm going to speak over who I think God wants them to be. Yeah, yeah. And I love that. Yeah, and you'll hear me if you ever listen to me communicate. I almost weave it in all the time yeah. because it's just it's such a staple in our family. But 
uh, my boys have what we call the big five. Big and, five. And, okay. And Give almost that to every us. day I talk to them. Uh, and honestly, it's it's literally almost every day. Okay. Um, I'll say, you know, hey, what's number one? And they say, hey, that's love Jesus. Okay. Um, number two is be a great man of God. Mm. Uh, so that's the number two thing, right? Number three is to be a great husband. Mm. Number four is to be a great father. Mm. And number five is to change the world. And so those are the affirmations I speak over them every single day. Wow. You know, inspired by scripture. Man, and, I love and that. And they know them. You know? I may adopt that right now and, and start uh, using it for my kids. <laughs> well, it's it's been neat because again, really cool. my four year old, if you walk up to him and it doesn't matter who you are, mm. and you say, Hey, what's number one? He'll tell you. Wow. He can speak those affirmations. He knows those affirmations. We talk about them on the way to school. We talk about them when they lay down for yeah. bed at night. And I don't drill them into them, yeah. but I make it a party. I make it a celebration. It is if our they anthem. get one of them wrong, like if they oh, get one yeah. of the five wrong, Time discipline out for them. Yeah. A- easy 20 minutes. Easy 20 minutes. Uh, Jonathan, I love that, man. That I think that's some really cool stuff. And, of course, everything we're saying is is descriptive, not prescriptive. We're right. just saying, hey, here's 100%. how we roll. But if you're listening to this podcast today, you know, Jonathan and I, as pastors and shepherds around here at Three Circle, along with our entire team, Mm -hmm. we want you to grow in Christ. And uh, that's why we're teaching through Gideon. We don't really want you to learn about Gideon. We want you to learn about God through Gideon's life. And so today we hope this has been helpful to you. Jonathan, I know you helped me. Uh, A lot of what you said today, I will implement. Just thank you for sharing with us. That five, that big five at the end was really cool because, man, you're helping those kids Uh, learn how to fight their battles right now. Right. And so we would encourage you to do, if you're listening today, uh, wherever you are, what are the little battles that, that you need to deal with so that you can be ready for the big ones that inevitably come. And and remember Gideon is going to fight the most famous battle of his life that he's known for. That's coming. He's going to fight the Midianites, this big, bad bully army. But I don't think he ever wins that battle if he did not tear down the Baal worship altar in his backyard. He had to win that battle first. And so I bet all of you have some things that as you listen to this, you go, okay, here's some things I need to focus on that seem like they're not a huge deal. They're probably a bigger deal than you realize. Right. Right? Jonathan, thanks for being with us today. Thanks for the opportunity. I yeah. sure thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. And uh, for all of you, whether you're in a car, a boat, you're on a back porch, a front porch, or maybe you're sitting on the couch, we pray and hope that you are encouraged today to follow Jesus more closely. And we pray that we have stirred your affections for Christ. He is absolutely worthy of it. Y'all have a great day. We'll see you next time here at the Three Circle Church Podcast. <laughs>